Right, hey everybody, this is Rob Carpenter here. I'm waiting for some of y'all to get on the line. I'm actually doing two streams here at the same time. Um, see if I can get on Twitter as well here. Let me see if I can get, there we go, make a little. So, so get somebody on the line. We're going to talk about cyberbullying and leadership. Cyberbullying and leadership. Yes, we are. Because there seems to be. I have something that I never experienced before happened to me today, and I was really taken aback. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Let me try to do it this way. Okay, let's see. No, I can't do it that way. All right, let's log in Twitter. Let's get on Periscope as well. But I'm coming to you on Facebook Live right now. And I'm uh, going to upload this. I was trying to do uh, YouTube Live, but I'm having a problem with the encoder. So what I'm going to do is just um, go ahead and um, upload this to those of you watching so those of you watching this on YouTube you won't see this live but rather you will see this um, let's see here immediately following let's see here yeah got, got some things here one I'm not going to be long got some things to tell, tell someone hey charity hey LaRonda glad for you to join us get some others on the line here because um, you know you hear about cyberbullying and all that kind of stuff, but until I guess until it happens to you, is when you really start to realize, okay, that uh, okay, maybe this is a serious situation. Now, before I go any further, I'm just going to tell you this right now. Um, I'm dealing specifically with cyberbullying and uh, and leadership. So those of you who are on here watching this whether live or otherwise and you want to think I'm going to talk about one thing no I'm not going to do that at all that's not what I'm here for I'm dealing specifically with what I'm dealing with now let's go ahead let's go ahead and get started get some other hey Sheila hey Mr. Johnson I see you there listen cyberbullying leadership I, I, I was sitting here and I said what is cyberbullying because you hear a lot about it and you you um wonder what it is and I found out today for my own self that cyberbullying is real and it should not be taken lightly the definition for cyberbullying is bullying that takes place using electronic technology which includes devices and equipment such as cell phones tablets computers as well as communication tools including social media sites text messages chats and websites now here's something interesting that I want you to know and we all may need to learn this is uh, nearly all states have bullying laws in place with many cyberbullying or electronic harassment provisions. Okay, so you have to find out, for, uh, you know, if it's you know, in your particular state. There's about 34 states that actually have cyberbullying laws, uh, and Florida and California are uh, part of those those uh, that that list. Cyberbullying is the use of technology to harass, threaten, embarrass, or target another person. Uh, a lot of times it happens with young people. But when an adult is involved, it may meet the definition of cyber harassment or cyber stalking. The crime that can have legal consequences, hey, Bakisha, hey, Greta, uh, and involve jail time. Okay. Um... Almost all, although most bullying and cyberbullying cases don't result in jail or prison time, we want to remind everyone that it is indeed possible to go to jail for bullying, even when no physical contact has been made, okay? And we just saw recently up in the New England area, the young lady who uh, got, uh, who texted, hey Michelle, um, who texted the guy and convinced him somehow into committing suicide. And she got charged and everything. So this this stuff is real. This stuff is real. Uh, let's see. What states have a law against cyberbullying? Let's see. 34 
states. The states that do not have laws for uh, cyberbullying are Alabama, Connecticut, Hawaii, Indiana, Maine, Michigan, Montana, New Mexico, North Dakota, South Dakota, Ohio, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. All right? So Florida and California have laws, and I'm saying that for a reason. I'll share with you in one moment. Here. Okay? Now, also, what can happen to you if, hey, Debbie, long time no see, uh, where do I report cyberbullying? Don't respond to and don't follow forward cyberbullying messages. Keep evidence, record the dates, times, descriptions, screenshots, save, block, and block the person who is cyberbullying. All right, listen, I, hey, Cheryl, I had a preacher who I've, I've only met one time. About a year ago, here in Tampa, at church, she came to our church and preached. Uh, did a lesson job, preached on a, on, a, on a Wednesday night. Hey, Mosi and Satanya. And, um, you know, cool cat, as far as I know, you know, and everything. And so, he and I spoke on last week about a, a, a church situation. And so, I, you know, he was kind of asking me. And I was, I was saying, hey, well, you know, you call the person, talk to them, pray with them, or whatever the case, you know. Um... But couldn't go into detail because things were literally happening, uh, 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 happening at the moment, you know, day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour. So uh, I don't know if, if the preacher actually talked to, hey, Denise, hey, that's y'all, Denise Chaplin Fortunato, excellent songwriter and artist. By the way, she didn't pay me to say that. This is true. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, but anyway, so what happened was, I don't even know if he talked to the person or whatever the case. That, that's neither here nor there. However, uh, that was Thursday, I believe. Wednesday or Thursday last week. However, this morning when I woke up, I saw that at 122, my time, hey, Michelle, um, I had a message from this preacher who lives in California. I'm in Florida. Only met him one time when he preached. You know, didn't have nothing bad to say about him at all till today. And uh, <laughs> and so because this preacher was upset about um, a situation that happened recently, which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, I'm on a self-imposed gag order. That's not why we're here. And um, I woke up this morning. And I just happened to say, I had these notifications. You know how you do, you know, you're praying, ask the Lord, to bless your day and all like that. And then the next thing we do is we look over, you know, see what, <laughs> what notifications we have. Let's be real about it. And I, I had this message from 1.22 a.m. And I'm going to read it for you. And uh, please forgive the uh, profanity, but I'm going to read it just as is. This preacher said to me, he said, you assassinated your ministry. Number one, he had 10 points here. So he took some time to write this. You are a lying ass. I won't even call you a preacher. Number two, I already knew what you said about my dad, calling him stupid, saying he needs to retire. How you canceled the meeting for that Wednesday night, which you didn't have authority to. Number three, your name has been spread across the country as a betrayer of this person. Pastors all over the country are upset with you and know your name. Hmm. Sounds like defamation of character here to me. Number four, you are not a son of my dad. A son protects his dad, right or wrong. You are a bastard in ministry. <laughs> now, let me stop here because for those of you not in the church, uh, this preacher calls this older preacher uh, his dad. It's not really his actual dad, not even his adopted daddy. He, he, he's his spiritual father. And I'm going to deal with that in a moment here. Okay, so he told me that I'm not a son and that a son protects his dad right or wrong. Number five, you are ungrateful. You stabbed dad in the back after he helped you. You are going, number six, you are going to get done worse than how you did dad. Number seven, you are going to be awakened to the fact that XYZ will never want you as their pastor. Hmm. Number eight, you knew that the church had voted when you had gotten in my inbox, which is not true, but you wanted to play as if you didn't know. Well, just because, uh, uh, just because I did not reveal information 
that was happening at the time to you. That's why I sent you to the source. I'm not here to broadcast that kind of stuff. I'm going to broadcast this because he put it on social media, so it's public record. Okay, number nine, you are stupid. Oh, by the way, this is a, a, a drone man. This is not a teenager. It's not a child. Number nine, you are stupid because you have now opened up, excuse my language, this is, I'm just reading it, you are stupid because you have now opened up a can of whip ash on yourself. And then finally he said, you will see me, I already told you, when you see me, you better hide. And he put that in quotations, in capitalization. Okay, when you see me, hide. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that preacher... I'm a, that preacher, I have, a, I have a case number here. I have a case number. You probably can't see it because it's back to the, But I have a case number here. Uh, I reported that Facebook message to Facebook. So Facebook is also doing that, uh, looking at that. But then, before I knew it, I was on Twitter. And he sort of was harassing me on Twitter. So... That, that, I was just like, dude, okay? So I, I don't take stuff like that. Hey, Cherry, I don't take stuff like that but for granted. And, and, I, and I must admit, sometimes you hear about cyberbullying and you just kind of say, oh, uh, well, you know, da, 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 whatever, whatever. But when it happens to you, because I'm sitting there saying, hold on a minute, I got to protect my wife. I got to protect my family. Uh, I, don't, I don't know him. I don't have a phone number for him. I don't have an address for him. I just know that he lives in Sacramento, according to his website, uh, his Facebook page, and, uh, you know, and all that. I didn't even follow him on Twitter. So when he got on Twitter, it, you know, it was just like, what's going on? This is unsolicited, unprovoked, all because of something he heard and assumed. Now, now, the reason why I have to take this seriously because it was just exactly a year ago that I met him. He was in Tampa preaching. He was here for a convention that normally goes on this week that has been rescheduled. But I don't know if he already is here in town or not. So, I mean, I, 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 I you know. <laughs> so I had to report it to Facebook. Facebook told me uh, I need to contact the authorities. Uh, Twitter, I contacted them. They're investigating. They told me what to do. So I did contact the authorities. And I do have a case number here with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Also, because it's in the states, uh, the, uh, the, the Sheriff's Department told me that I need to probably need to contact the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, because... Uh, him being in another state and it being done online, so there's some issues there. Uh, so they they are being contacted, and um, this this is what we're doing now. Hey, Clarence, now let let me just share some with you. Now, I'm, I'm talking about cyberbullying leadership, and if you hang on here, I'm going to tell you who it is because again, when you put stuff out there public record, then you I can tell it. Okay, listen, understand something uh, as leadership. And this is, in the, I'm speaking the church, but even any kind of leadership. As leaders, we have a responsibility. As leaders, we have a responsibility. Yes, was his Twitter response to you or to me? Well, he tagged me and the other person and you in that. But nonetheless, I reported him because, again, it was after the, um, the whole Facebook debacle there. Listen, as leaders, we have to be very careful very careful that we do not incite anger, violence, and, uh, and, and wrongful behaviors in those who follow us. Now, let me give you a good example. Last week, a guy went to a baseball field. He asked, are you all Democrats or Republicans? And when he found that they were Republicans... He started shooting. Some people were killed. A congressman is in the hospital fighting for his life. Some people say he was provoked by the Democrat Party or the Bernie Sanders Party, whatever the case. Some people say he was provoked by our current president. I don't know, but understand we can all agree that there is a certain level of anger, resentment, hate that has been incited by leadership in our country. And so it's the same goes in the church. I don't have to always tell you what to do as a leader, but I can infer things. I can 
suggest things. I can uh, uh, say things in a certain way that gives you, that angers you, that incites you to want to do something, act. And then I can sit back and say, I didn't tell them to do that. And then there's other times I can say, do this, do that. And we have to be very careful because as leaders, we all have influence, whether good or whether bad. Now, again, I don't really know the brother. I don't have nothing to say against him. All I know is from whatever he's heard, whatever he's assumed, he got so angry that he decided to send a threatening message to physically threaten me over Facebook. Now, that in and of itself shows you that he wasn't thinking. Because <laughs> it's there, and I can't act like it was not there. I had to report it. I had to go to the authorities because if some, that's why I'm on here. If something happens to me, now we know where it could have come from. Again, I'm not talking about the situation that he's upset about. Okay, not referring to that because I have not said anything public about this and not going to. I have kept my hands out of that and away from it. Now, you can think what you want to and all that, but that's fine. But the issue is, as leaders, we have to be careful what we say and how it influences others. Because here's a guy, businessman, good preacher, holding nine yards. Now, he's going to get a knock on his door. He's going to get content. He may get blocked on Facebook. I don't know what the, what's going to happen. But understand something. And, 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 you know, hey, obnoxious. Listen, and here's what the other thing is. The, 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 the sheriff's deputy told me to contact him and respond to him by saying, please cease and desist. Do not contact me anymore. Law enforcement authorities have been contacted and are aware and they're monitoring you and the situation. Do you know that brother turned right back around and said, I'm not going to contact you anymore, but let me just say this. I wasn't threatening you. You just were scared. And it's like, bro, I just said don't contact me anymore. And you still turned around and contacted me. Now you're saying you didn't physically threaten me. Hey, Gwen. Um, he is blocked off of Facebook. Yes, he is. He is blocked. He is blocked because I blocked him. And I have the screenshot if you want to see it, uh, uh, this uh, charity. Uh, yeah, I, I did block him after the deputy told me to send him that message. And since he was, he was standing right there and he responded right back, he got this deputy got the screenshot. Hey, Alex, he got the screenshot of that as well. And then that's when I blocked him. Okay, so, yes, I followed everything that I was told to do for my safety and for my family's safety, okay? I'm not trying to start a fight with that brother. I don't know the brother. I don't know. Okay, all I can tell you is just, you know, what is this? I know that he has been incited by anger because of what he's heard. I don't even know who he's heard it from and what he's assumed. But you know what they say about assumptions. When you assume stuff, sometimes you get yourself in trouble. So it's best to just, and see, as leaders, preachers, we're supposed to tell people, hey, you know what, pray. And pray before you speak. Listen, I know I can be a hothead. See, I grew up, let me just say the first one. I grew up, well, my mom always, hey, just let me fuck along, don't say nothing. And then, no, no, but once you get kicked a few times and, and, and cut a few times and some people are smiling in face and asking where the blood's coming from, after a while, when you see a malfeasance or see something happening, you say something right there. So, you know, I you know, I know that. So what I have to do now that I'm an adult and, 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 and older now, okay, what I have to do, I have to pray that prayer, hold your peace, let the Lord fight your battle. And the last two is I said, hold my peace and let the Lord fight me about it. Because I have, my, <laughs> my name has been put out there in the last week and a half, two weeks, like crazy. And I had my attorney drop the cease and desist letters for a lawsuit. Would have won. It was putting right in the whole nine years. You know what I said? Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Now, I have to tell my flesh daily, sometimes several times a day lately, bring my flesh under, under subjection. 
Bring my flesh to the subjection, Lord. And I hope I'm helping somebody. Bring my flesh to the subjection. Sometime I have to tell my flesh and my soul, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, all that's within me, bless his holy name. I got to bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, for getting out his benefits, all that he's done for me. I have to start telling myself that and thinking about David. Because see, even David said, give me the necks of those of my enemies. Even David said, God smite the hand of my enemies. But no, I'm going to do like Jesus said, and I'm going to pray for those who are, think that they're my enemies. Oh, that's hard, y'all. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. This has been a child. If nothing else, this has been a learning experience on temperance, long-suffering, patience, just what the old folk call just going through and holding your peace. Hey, Sylvia. Uh, 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 yeah. Prayer to remain kept. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I mean, you just have to say, Holy Ghost, keep me. And the Bible is true. He'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. So what I want you to do, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. I've already been on here about, uh, I don't even know how long, however long, 10, 15 minutes. Listen, I'm going to go. This is what I want you to do. If you're on Twitter, don't attack this brother. Don't attack him. Don't attack him. Pray for him. His Twitter name is R-E-V-B Nelson. Rev B. Nelson at Twitter. His name on Facebook is Brooklyn Nelson, Sacramento, California. Don't harass him. Tell him you're praying for him. Call his name in prayer. Because he was manipulated. He was manipulated. He was angry. He was hurt. Of course, he's not here to really know what's going on, so he's not even getting the full story. A lot of us are hurt. A lot of us are angry. But that doesn't mean I go and I threaten somebody. Because cyberbullying is real. It is a crime. And in this day and age and in this climate, it cannot be taken lightly. I'm going to go. But join me in prayer. Because this is going this is going to help you, but it's going to help me as well. Father, I thank you right now. Bright on my tongue, calm my spirit. Let my soul continue to bless you, Lord. God, somebody said you do all things well. And I ask you now to touch that brother, touch Brooklyn Nelson right now. That he will realize what he's done. And allow your spirit, just like a master of yours, to overtake him, to calm his spirit, calm his nerves, and for just to pray and hold his peace and let the Lord fight the battle. Father, even though it shocked me, even though it hurt me, even though it angered me, even though it scared me, I pray blessings on him right now. I bless him right now, his family, his loved ones, whatever he puts his hands to do. And I thank you, God. That through all of this chaos, through all of this situation, somehow you will get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening to me. Those of you on YouTube or Periscope and, and everything, you can, you can hit me up on Facebook or whatever. Uh, uh, whatever the case, or you can hit, email me, info, I-N-F-O, at robcarpenter2.com. This has been quite a day. This is not what I had planned today. I was actually, uh, I had to have surgery, as you see. My carpal tunnel surgery on my hand in, in, in a few days. That's what I'm supposed to be, be concerned about and dealing with. But nonetheless, God is good. Sylvia, thank you. Know that God knows and sees our love covers and know that people do need deliverance. That person may need crying out, may be crying out for help always. Say what God is doing. Always say what God is doing in this. Amen, Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, thank you for joining us. I'll talk to you later. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Love you. Peace.